The vast Mongolian environment offers the charms of nature in its wild state. I board the Trans-Mongolian Railway, which connects Russia and China and discover the various facets of Mongolia. This Mongolian journey has been a chance for me to look into the modest lives and joys of the people. Today's destination is Gobi, the beautiful desert. A land of strong vitality. I'm off to the Gobi Desert, which offers a special gift found nowhere else in the world. You can reach Mongolia's endless green meadows and barren deserts through a three-hour plane ride from Seoul. After traveling from the capital Ulaanbaatar to Seinshand on the Trans-Mongolian Railway, which connects Russia and China, I get in a car bound for Dalanzagad. I race through Omnogovi province. Govi means a rough land where grass hardly grows. But in this semi-desert terrain, I can see little patches of grass here and there. Ah. 이런 고비 사막 한복판에 이런 기왕 계석이 있는 협곡이 있다는 게참 놀랍습니다. 와, 장관입니다, 정말. I'm on my way to find a gorge called Yolin Am. On the side of the path, a small Mongolian gerbil greets me. <laughs> I heard that bearded vultures, which are an endangered species, dwell here. But I can't be sure if that's an eagle or a bearded vulture. I also encounter horned yaks. These creatures all live in harmony with the valley. She's hard at work at something. She's carving rocks. She's good even though she hasn't had any professional training. She says she uses stones and wood from the gorge. Her works are also things that you can commonly see here. She has preserved the original shape of the wood for this ladle. I pick out a souvenir. It's a Mongolian gerbil like the one I saw on the road today. Yolin Am is also referred to as Ice Canyon because ice from the winter remains intact throughout the summer. You can see clear water flowing when you go into the gorge. Cool air surrounds the gorge, but there's no hint of ice around. I'm very disappointed because I had come full of hope to find an ice canyon, but the magnificent views of the gorge is amazing in itself.
About 40% of Mongolia consists of desert. And some people live in such terrain. I hear of a special ceremony that is taking place in one of the Gurs. <laughs> Neighbors and foreign tourists are gathered inside. <laughs> the head of the house serves homemade hard liquor called arki, as well as some erak. Mongolians make sure to have white-colored food on special occasions because they believe it to be sacred. Now people take turns singing. <laughs> Tolga has a great sense of humor. The star of the day is asleep, though. <laughs> the child's father proposes to play the Morin Tologai Hall. The Morin Tologai Hall is a traditional Mongolian instrument. The ritual starts in earnest when the child awakens. When a child is born in Mongolia, they don't cut the baby's hair until it reaches Da Urgi. They choose a good day for the child to cut his or her hair for the first time. The guests take turn cutting a bit of the child's hair and offering prayers for his health and happiness. The cut locks of hair are placed in a pouch. I also offer a prayer for his welfare. At this time, guests give money or a gift too and share well-wishing remarks for the child. <laughs> the celebration is like Korean first birthdays. <laughs> Family and relatives from far distances also come and bless the child as it's an important day.
It was fun for me to witness how the Mongolian people maintain their customs. The Gobi Desert is an arid wilderness that spreads out endlessly before me. I discover a herd of camels resting. I go up to the Gur, curious to see who the owner is. She greets me warmly, even though I'm a stranger. The elderly lady raises camels, sheep, and goats here. During the summer, she rents the camels to tourists who visit the desert. Mongolian camels are Bactrian camels, which means they have two humps. You can't come to the Gobi Desert and leave out the fun of a camel ride. From up close, I notice how long and thick the camel's eyelashes are. I take a tour of the desert on a camel. It costs about 10 US dollars to rent one for an hour. The wind, sand, and shadows create a wonderful work of art. The Kongarin Els Desert is so breathtaking that I'm mesmerized. I store up the desert landscapes in my mind's eye. The old lady invites me into her home. She serves me a warm cup of Sute Tsai tea. I'm sure it isn't easy to live and raise livestock in such a harsh desert. She's churning the milk to make arak, and I see white chunks of something on the paddle. Orum is Mongolian butter that is attained in the Arag fermenting process. <laughs> These days, her eight year old granddaughter helps her make Arag. <laughs> Oh, 
Тэгээд хорхог гэж дараа За байлаа Dictor says she will make a special dish for me. <laughs> However, the sheep are much more nimble than I imagined. Catching one doesn't seem easy. With much effort, they catch the one Dictor has chosen. In Mongolia, when killing sheep, they make a slit in the chest, insert a hand, and cut off the blood flow to the heart's artery. Fascinatingly, not a single drop of blood gets on his hands. <laughs> On one side, potatoes, carrots, and other ingredients are being prepared. Gathering firewood is up to the men. They place firewood between two large stones. There is something that you must have when making korkog. It's none other than these shiny stones. In Mongolian, kokog means meat cooked with hot stones. This is a dish that they have on special occasions when they have a big family event or when an important guest visits. The process is also very fun. Once the stones are heated, they alternately place them in the jar along with the meat. I lend a hand too. Finally, they add the prepared vegetables. They roll the jar several times to let the ingredients and hot stones mix well. Now all we have to do is happily wait. He rolls the jug one last time to mix everything together. Finally, the cork hog is ready. Korkog contains no spices and is made only with mutton and vegetables. The meat is done. Delicious smells waft through the air, stimulating my taste buds. The stones used to cook the korkog do not go to waste. The hot stones, which have been saturated in mutton grease, are passed out to everyone. They say that it's good for your health to rub them in your hands. And what does Korkog taste like? Digtir hands me the first helping since I'm the guest. The lamb doesn't smell at all.
Pork hog is one of the dishes you must try when visiting Mongolia. The meat is very soft and tender, perhaps because of the pressure that forms from the heated stones that are added to the steamer. You can enjoy the true flavors of the meat. It's delicious even though it lacks any seasonings. Dick Tear hands me some Eirag for dessert, saying that it'll help digest the Horhag. <laughs> the day of relaxing my body and restoring my mind in the Gobi Desert is drawing to an end. The next morning, A day for a nomad begins by looking after livestock. The goat kids, which had been fenced in overnight, are let loose. This time, they herd the nanny goats into the pen. Once all of them are inside, Digtir sends a signal. She takes a seat in the pen and starts milking. However, she leaves some milk for the goat kids. Each of the milked nanny goats is sent out. where its kid awaits its mother. Fascinatingly, the kid recognizes its mother and starts nursing. <laughs> Duan Yam is 10 years old. Even at such a young age, she is a good granddaughter who helps her grandmother with the work. She is very skilled with her hands and is adept at handling the goats that are larger than she. What could be more important to Mongolian nomadic people than milk from their livestock? She is brewing Sutai Tse tea with the fresh goat's milk. Mongolians make a big batch of Sutai Tse tea and enjoy it the way we drink water. It's chock full of nutrients. Duan Yam returns after finishing her chores. At the same time, her younger sister is still fast asleep. There are people who are leading rich lives amid this arid, rough land. The desert is not so barren thanks to these people.
The sky and the land of the Gobi Desert are like landscape paintings. Most people think of a desolate desert when they think of the Gobi. However, you can find the joy of harvest even here. I make a visit to some farmers in the middle of the desert. She's been farming and living here for a long time. <laughs> A fruit harvested from the Gobi Desert. How will it taste? It tastes better than I expected. I wonder how she's able to grow such delicious fruit in a desert. The fruit, having overcome the beating sun and harsh winds, is sent to the big cities. I'm told that the income is much better than leading a nomadic life. Water is the most important thing for farming. How did they get this precious water in the desert? There's an oasis in the middle of this desert. Clear water is flowing from between the rocks. It reminds me of a line in a book I read. The desert is beautiful because a well is hidden somewhere in it. The fierce wind seems to be guiding me where I should head next. This is called Mongolia's Grand Canyon. I arrive in Bayanzag, where red canyons offer a magnificent view. Bayanzag means there are many small trees. However, it's not easy to spot any trees now due to desertification. The cliffs, which have eroded away over countless years, are breathtaking. According to the movement of the sun, the shadows that are cast continue to create a different view of Bayanzag.
this is where I wrap up my pleasant and joyful Mongolian trip. I remember the vast grasslands that I saw from the trains. I was able to fully enjoy the rich and abundant embrace of Mother Nature during this trip. I could feel a strong sense of vitality in the nomadic people who live in their own ways in compliance with nature. It is a travel destination with many charming aspects. This is Mongolia. Oh, my God.